peace for Ukraine or you reign. You don't know, I have a lot of inconveniences because I have to go quietly everywhere. I'm not like you, you can go anywhere. You get visa anywhere, show yourself anywhere, yeah? I have to be more quiet. In order to serve you, I sometimes have to do everything alone, go alone like a very, very poor and helpless person, without attendance, without anyone to help even. I have to carry all my luggage alone and, and go quietly, buy my own ticket and do everything. Book ticket and check out, check in <laughs> hotel and then check out, check in airplane and, and run with the airplane, whatever, I have to do everything uh, very quietly in order to be here or to be anywhere. It's not the way you imagine. I cannot be too obvious, yeah, up to now. I go everywhere, incognito, anonymous. Uh, there's so many things I cannot tell you. Just, just believe me that I, <laughs> I'm like a spy on this planet. You seen James Bond films? <laughs> okay, okay, imagine. I have to do a hundred times more than he does. And many things I cannot disclose. Yeah? I cannot go anywhere and tell him, here, I'm Supreme Master Jing Hai, look at me. <laughs> give me a visa, give me this, give me that. No, no, no. I have to do it very, very quietly. You see, I have to even have my hair like this so I can sleep through quickly. You don't know. You don't know what I, I do. <laughs> All the glories and love you have for me, I have to hide it in my pocket wherever I travel. You understand? Only when I'm with you here, I'm open and free, yeah? I let my hair down and I do anything with you and, and you know me, you see my face. When I go alone, I almost have to wear the mask. Mm. Never mind, I cannot tell you all the, the things I do because it is confidential. Nothing bad, nothing bad. It's just some <laughs> like spy tricks. You, know? <laughs> you have to apply some certain fashion of traveling in order to go uh, uh, anonymously, not to steer up any attention. I cannot tell you everything. <laughs> Why I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm sorry. I cannot uh, disclose everything. Maybe I will write a book, after I die you publish it and you know everything, but not right now. Right now I keep all the methods to myself. You see all the masters who, who, who do things openly and everybody knows what they're about. You think they live long? You see, you see even just a, not really a master, even a teacher who is famous in America or elsewhere, you think they leave them alone? Hmm? Either they might not kill them, but they forbid them to go here, go there, they, they can't go anywhere. Not to too many countries. They might go once and then they can't go again. Things like that. I'm very lucky to have made it up to now. Every country that we want to go, I go. I consider I'm very lucky and this is God's blessing. Some teachers I know and so-called masters, even the Indian master you mentioned, yeah? He cannot just go anywhere. He'll be stopped at the airport, deported back home. Forbidden to go in many certain countries. He can make it only once or twice, but can't make it again. So you are very lucky that you can see me in every country, everywhere. I say, okay, I just go. But uh, I can't just go the way they go. I can't just go, uh, you know, with trumpets and drums and <laughs> with you behind proclaiming my name in all corners of the universe, <laughs> you know. Sometimes very funny. You don't know. Sometimes you encounter me on the street, but you did not see me at all. I just passed through. <laughs> it's amazing.
I remember one day I was in, in, in Port, Portugal, yeah? And I was sitting in a taxi all alone behind in the back. And there was a sister on the street. She was distributing pamphlets, you know, flyers. And the taxi stopped in front of the red line. I was so scared she see me. But she did. She, she put the, the flyer through the, <laughs> through the taxi. Yeah, she gave me one. And the taxi stopped there for two agonizing minutes <laughs> because of the red light. Oh, it seemed like two minutes or two years. I don't know, I can't remember. And she did give me a flyer and one to the taxi driver. <laughs> yeah. And one time I went to the supermarket, tried to buy something for myself. In another country, I forgot where. And uh, one brother just stood right in front of the, the entrance of the supermarket and was giving the flyers. I was right in front of his nose, but he didn't see. So I just... <laughs> I fly away, you know, faster than the flyer. Yeah. Uh, many times it was just close encounter of any kind. <laughs> it, it was fun, you know. <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> and sometimes I go through the airport and some of the countries that I have been to many times, they recognize me. But they're still thinking, you know, <laughs> shaking their heads and knitting their brows and scratching their hair and thinking, huh? Hmm. Hmm. No. <laughs> Luckily, the posters don't always look like me. <laughs> In uh, one country, we couldn't do anything there because uh, at the end, you know, they were like persecuting our disciples and everybody ran everywhere hiding. It was terrible. They even applied some very, very uncivilized method suffering. So a lot of people run around, and they didn't even tell me anything, because I promised to come, so I had to come. I came late, because in Israel they turn all my lipsticks upside down, inside out, and look with a microscope, see whatever I put in my lipstick there. And I have hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but everything, you know, they turn everything upside down to look, see what I carry. Come in, no problem. Come in now. There was um, some uh, windstorm somewhere, I don't know, they check everything. Just check us, me and the two attendants. So from then on, I know I don't, don't need to take any attendance because if they check me alone, it's quicker. <laughs> check three, it's too much trouble. So I don't bring people anymore. Yeah, bring one, you have one problem. Bring two, you have double problem. If just bring one, even just bring one. Uh, his, uh, visa, his passport is different from mine and the visa problem already uh, loom very large, for example. Sometimes I bring one or two, but then they, they go with me and then they are stuck somewhere else and I have to go alone anyway. See what I mean? <laughs> because of visa. Sometimes the agency doesn't know that this and this nationality need visa or not. They say, no, no need, just go. A landing visa, everybody's time at the airport. But it's not true always. And sometimes because of uh, uh, holidays and so the embassy is closed, we can't get a visa uh, immediately anywhere else, blah, blah. Anyhow, so in Israel, they checked for a long time. Yeah, everybody else went already. All the disciples were gone except me and the two attendants. So anyway, finally, they let us go, but I was late. And it was good that I was late because all the police and everybody was waiting for me at the airport. Anyway, because I came late, they thought I didn't come, so nobody checked me. But one customs inspector, he looked at me, looked at my luggage, and I said, Huh? I think you look like the Supreme Master Ching Hai. <laughs> I said, Ah, everybody said that. <laughs> I say, I hear that all the time. <laughs> so he didn't think of anything, he gave me a stamp, and then I went. <laughs> and after I left a long, long, long distance, you know, I blow a kiss to him. <laughs> and then he said, Ah, 
Ah, you are, you are. <laughs> you are the master. <laughs> I ran already to the taxi. <laughs> Yeah, and then I went there, but then I couldn't see anybody because the police were everywhere. Wherever I was supposed to be, they posted like an army around there. And then I went there, even I went there, because <laughs> I didn't know where else to go. <laughs> I went to the supposed to be venue, even the second changed venue. But even then they couldn't do anything because the police were everywhere. They didn't let us uh, do it. At first it was okay, but later it was not okay. And sometimes it happened like that. It happened the same in Indonesia once, yeah? So it's not always uh, like 100%, it's mostly 99%, it's good enough already, yeah. Anyhow, but I went there, fine. And then police were all over. But I walked through, I walked through the police guard, I went in there. And I saw one or two disciples were left there, but it was not really disciples, but the disciples to be. And so they didn't know them, and they probably stay in there waiting for me, but trying to look like business people and talk. I didn't even know them. And then I kept asking people, you know, there was supposed to be a meeting here. Where have they gone? All gone. And one disciple to be, he heard my voice, and he came and, and swept me right away, <laughs> whipped me right away into the taxi and said, don't talk right here, we go out. <laughs> uh, I take you to where they are, that's it. And then we just, we just ran through the taxi and went in. And then the police stopped us in front of the gate and said, where, where are you all going? And we don't even speak. The taxi driver, before that I already gave him a hundred dollar tip, you know, to do whatever my, my, <laughs> my demand. He was very happy with the dollars, so he was happy with me. He's a Muslim. I, I had a Koran next to me and, you know, I show him. I let him know, not showing him, but I let him know that I had the Koran. And I covered my head, and he was very happy with me. He thought I was his buddy, yeah. <laughs> and the hundred dollars helped a great deal, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't speak anything, and I covered my head a little, and had my hands on the Koran. And the taxi driver talked, 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 talked something to the policeman, because the police wanted to stop us, and wanted all of us to go out of the car to check. But the, the driver told him something, and then they let him go. He kept looking at me all the time, the police. And then the driver talked to him. And later one of the initiates to be, uh, he understood. He told me that just now the driver told the police that we are uh, Japanese. <laughs> 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 uh, Japanese uh, business uh, people. We are looking for a business uh, uh, friend in another hotel. We are in a hurry, so better let us go. <laughs> We are very important uh, Japanese uh, business people. Yeah, okay, so we just left. I didn't tell a lie, it was driver who said. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, and then I went in and of course I just saw one or two of them and I couldn't see the rest. They told me of the police in front of the hotel. So I had to go and I check in another hotel. <laughs> 